Dead silence here at Fenway as the San Diego Padres defeat the Red Sox 6-4 in Game 7 of the World Series. So it's the San Diego Padres who sneaked past the Mets in the National League Wild Card Game who are your 2026 World Series champions. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villa. Welcome to episode 109 of the New York Mets, the final episode. And can you effing believe it? The team that we blew a 6-0 lead against in the wildcard game only went on and won the whole friggin' thing. Unbelievable. I cannot... I, I'm so annoyed at that. Anyway, guys, what we're going to do today, we're going to have our end of season awards. We're then going to go through and I'm going to go through what I think is the team, sort of the starting nine of, the, of our time at the New York Mets. Uh, we are going to do another baseball series. Let me know your, what you think we should be doing for, we'll call it winter ball, um, to, while we wait for the new season to start. I'm wondering, do we do a bit of a, like, travel around the, the Major League Baseball and, and you know, start, I'll just sort of throw a dart at the map of the US and we'll start as the nearest team and maybe three seasons and out or win a World Series and out. Uh, do you want to do that kind of thing or do we want to kind of start unemployed and maybe just, I don't know, see where it takes us, whether we play in Cuba or Mexico or Australia or France or, or you know, just trying to have a league. There's all sorts of leagues that we can play as uh, in the game. So let me know what you're thinking, and that's what we'll do. I'm thinking maybe we do like a major league, major league uh, team. Just I think it might be a little bit more popular, perhaps. Uh, but or open to feedback on that one, guys. But let's not waste any time. Let's get to these end of season awards and see who is going to win the player of the season, uh, among other things, uh, for our final season at the Mets. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the New York Mets end of season awards. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. I'm um, not. This is too much. Too much, everybody. Sit down, please. Sit down. Thank you. I want to start by thanking everybody for just what has been a wonderful time here at the New York Mets. And this is obviously my last official duty as Mets general manager, but it has been a true honor uh, to serve here, to serve you. Uh, and I've had such a wonderful time. It's a real shame uh, the way things finished up, especially given that the Padres went on to win the whole thing. Um, but we know in our hearts that if Ishmael Aguirre hadn't stuffed things up for us, that we would have been World Series champions. We're better than the Padres, and we know that. And Ishmael, I don't know who invited you, mate, but you sit down, you be quiet. Cal, on the floor, mate. You don't deserve a seat. Get on the floor. Now, floor. Thank you. All right, now we should start, though, before we get the awards underway, by giving the players a very warm round of applause. Most of them, Aguere, did a very good job this year. Thank you, guys. I'm very proud. But let's get the awards underway. And first up tonight, it is the award for most wins by a pitcher. And we know that this guy has been an absolute star for us for my entire time, the last eight seasons or so, with 12 wins... It's Noah Syndergaard. All right, now it's time to give the batters some recognition with the award for the best batting average. And this year, he was a quiet achiever, but a consistent achiever as well, with a batting average of 277. The winner is Keston Hura. Now it's time for one of the awards that the players really, really earn. It's the Golden Bullseye awarded to the player hit most by pitchers. And this year it's a new name on the trophy, uh, but someone who has deserved it, obviously, having taken 11 bullets uh, for the team. And that man is... Chevron Newton. Get up here, Chevy. Alright, the next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the man who drags the team down, the man who was hit into the most double plays. And this is a pres another prestigious award, some very, very prestigious names on this prestigious trophy. And this year, it's no different. Having hit into 18 double plays, the winner is... Eloy Jimenez! Next up, it is the Golden Boot, awarded to the pitcher who has issued the most walks. And again, we've got some prestigious names on this trophy. I think DeGrom, I remember correctly, back in the early days, used to clean up this award season after season. But it's not DeGrom. He has long since retired this year with 72 walks issued. The winner is Anderson Espinosa. The next award is the Golden Glasses, awarded to the man who has struck out the most 
uh, as a batter. And again, this season, it is another new name on the trophy. And this guy, he gets hit by the baseball, but he doesn't hit it back. With 143 strikeouts, it's Chevron Newton. And the next award is the Golden K, awarded to the pitcher with the most strikeouts, the man who would like to face Chevron Newton every day in batting practice if he could. And this year it's a defense of the trophy with 204 strikeouts. It's Anderson Espinosa. The next award is the Golden Broom, awarded to the man who sweeps the bases, the man with the most RBIs. Now it's not the RBI train, Mr. Godman, uh, though if he had played the full season that may well have been, but it is a legend of the club nonetheless. With 85 RBIs, the winner is, well it's legend. Now it's time to award the pitcher with the best ERA, and this man was an absolute star for us. He was as good as a sure thing when he came out of the bullpen, with an ERA of 155. It's Jared Southard. Now it's time to acknowledge the man with the most home runs, and not the best season for us in terms of home run hitting, I've got to say, but... This man still managed to clear the fence 27 times. And that man, well, he's legend. Now it's time to award the horse's ass for this season's worst player. And it can only go to one man. Ishmael Aguari, get up here, mate. You're a disgrace. Okay, it's time to award Best Pitcher. And Aguero, you can stay there, mate, because you are not getting this. I can spoil that for you now. Now, as ever, there is a formula we use to determine this, and you can see that formula down in the description. Uh, but in third place, with a score of 50, it's Anderson Espinosa. In second place, with a score of 50.32, only just getting in as first runner-up, it's Jared Southard. And the winner of Best Pitcher in our final year at the Mets with a score of 59.77. It's the one, it's the only, it's Noah Syndergaard. And now it's time to award the Best Batter. Now again, there is a formula we use to determine this and you can see that uh, along with the scores of the top three uh, award winners down in the description. In third place, he finished the season like a house on fire with 31.38 score, it's Miguel Soto. In second place, with a score of 38.32, it's Keston Hura. But the winner of Best Batter, with a score, a stunning score of 58.46, it's Legend. And this brings us to the final award and the end of the evening, which is, it's, uh, my time at the Met is almost done. It's getting emotional. But the golden star for this season's best New York Met, the MVP, uh, you could also call it, I guess. But the winner is, oh, and it's a stunning result. It's actually a joint winners this year. The joint winners, I'm unable to split them. They've both been stars, one with the bat, one with the ball. It's Noah Syndergaard and it's legend. Noah, I'm sorry, mate. Go do your press conference. Legend got here first. We'll get another trophy made for you, okay? All right. Good stuff, mate. Stop complaining. That brings us to the end of the evening and the end of our time at the New York Mets. Congratulations to Legend, Noah, and the rest of the winners as well. Uh, I just want to say, as I said at the beginning, it's been an absolute privilege to serve as your general manager. I don't know who's coming in to replace me just yet, but I am positive that you will go on and you will get another World Series with this team that I have built for you. That I can, I can't assure you, but let's hope that you do anyway. I just want to thank everybody in the auditorium. Thank everybody watching at home. And I will see you at a baseball diamond somewhere else, but it won't be City Field. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your night. So there we go. I couldn't split them in the end. Legend and Syndergaard share uh, the Golden Star. Let me know what you think of that. Um... They were just so far and away. Even on the, if you if you check the um in the in the, in the description there, the 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 uh the scores I guess for the best pitcher, best batter award, they were essentially even. One of them was just a star with a bat. One of them was a star on the mound. And I just thought, you know what, 
I'm not going to choose my favourite. You can both have it. So there we go. Uh, we end the end of season awards. Our time at the Mets. Well, maybe a controversial decision I'm in that I didn't make one. Uh, but let's have a look here now. What I think is our team of our time at the Mets. Uh, we'll start in the outfield, perhaps. Um, let's start over here in right field. And the right fielder I've gone with is Christian Yelich. He was only with us for one season, but it was our World Series winning season. And he was the only player. He got 104 RBIs uh, in that season, which is the only time any of our hitters have got over 100 RBIs. He also got 179 hits. Um, he was a star in the field as well. I just think Christian Yelich, even though it was one season, he was a one season wonder very much. And it was the season one of the World Series. So a bit of a no-brainer there, I think. In center field, this came down to one of two players. Uh, it came down to Treadmill, who I absolutely love, Brendan Nimmo. And of course, he was a member of our World Series winning team as well, or Legend. In the end, I've gone with Legend. He's only been here for two years, but he's just, he was, he's more dangerous with the bat, isn't he? Uh, although we, I did love Treadmill's on base percentage, but he hit 57 home runs, 162 RBIs, um, and he was reliable in the field as well. So Legend gets the nod at center field. And then in right field, I mean, pretty much everybody is a one from the World Series winning team from here on out, to be honest. But we've gone with Michael Conforto. Um, uh, I just, did I say right field, left field? Michael Conforto. 196 home runs he hit. 564 RBIs. He was, at times, just, I think at one point I'd call him the postman because he just always delivered. I, I think he just sneaks in ahead of a few other guys, mostly... Um, because he was part of that World Series winning team that probably gets him in ahead of the likes of, say, uh, Eloy Jimenez, who's been good for a few seasons, Suzuki, who's been good for a few seasons, not so much this season, but he's been good for a few seasons as well. Um, but yeah, I give Conforto the nod at, um, yeah, at, 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 out there in left field. First base. Again, it's one of our World Series winning heroes. It's my boy, Blue. Uh, Alonso gets the nod there. Um, I think if we had maybe kept playing a little bit longer, we might have seen Godman, perhaps. Uh, he's got off to a very, very good start in his career. But 142 home runs for Alonso, uh, 406 RBIs. I mean, those numbers speak for themselves. He gets them. He was not, not the best defensively, but he at the, at the plate, he was my boy. Um, so he gets the nod there. At second base, I've gone again, another member of the World Series winning team underrated he never really he never really started a season at first choice second base always finished the season at first choice at second base and it's Jeff McNeil uh a batting average of 293 uh while we we're at the club and 258 RBIs he was sort of the leadoff man before Griff McGear came in to be the leadoff man and he just did a much better job of it to be honest so and McNeil has the nod at second base shortstop again he was only young in the, I think it was his rookie season, in fact, in our, our World Series winning team, but he was a member of it. It's Ronnie Mauricio. He has been an absolute star, uh, at, whether it be at shortstop or at second base. Um, 592 hits, would you believe, he has uh, for, with the Mets so far in his career. He could well go on to over 1,000 hits, I would imagine. Uh, 230 RBIs and an absolute gun in the field as well. And then third base, um, it can, again, member of the World Series winning team. Everybody's favorite German, Eberhard Morlock. He was an absolute gun at the plate. He was our best batter, I think, for most seasons. Batting average of 284, 317 RBIs, and over six, almost 700 hits for the Mets as well. An absolute star, a beast at the plate, uh, and not too bad defensively as well. So he gets the he gets the shout at third base. The catcher. It pretty much came down to Big Willie Ramos, if you remember, all the way back to Big Willie Ramos and Francesco Alvarez. I've given it only just to Francesco Alvarez, maybe because he's fresher in my mind, uh, because they were both members of the of the World Series winning team. Alvarez, of course, I think, like Mauricio, it was his rookie season at the time. But he's hit 41 home runs uh, and 190 RBIs, which isn't too bad as a catcher. I don't think uh, we would have put up similar numbers. I don't think Willie Ramos did the same sort of thing. So Francesco Alvarez gets a nod at the plate. And starting pitchers, there can only be one, can't there? He's been with us the entire time. Obviously a member of the World Series winning team as well. It's Noah Syndergaard. 163 wins, an ERA of 284. He was he was Mr. Go-To Man, wasn't he? He had one or two... He had one bad season. Even this season, I think he re rebounded. He found a lot of his form back. Um... So yeah, I, I I just I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, so there we go. Let me know what you think of that uh, that starting nine. Uh, if we're looking at other pitchers who've been really good for us, 
Um, I mean, Peterson's been very reliable. We had, yeah, I mean, I can't even think of all the pitchers we've had now, but uh, I mean, Espinosa's been good. DeGrom, back in the day, he had these injury problems, though, didn't he? He was solid for us. Uh, but all the way back to the first season with Zach Wheeler, he was sort of a breakout star, wasn't he? Um, but I, no one, no one put up the same numbers and was the, as just the, he's Mr. Matt, isn't he? Noah in the garden, so he had to be the man on the mound. If we're looking at bullpen pitchers, Willie Ramos was quite good for us. Um, I'd like to see if we kept going in the likes of Jared Southard, see how he would do. Um, I think he would probably get a run out. Uh, Brian Garcia has been very good out of the bullpen for us as well. Um, but yeah, we, we, I'm not going to go that deep into it, basically, because I don't really have room on this uh, screen to do that. So there we go. Let me know what you think. Any disagreements you have. I've probably forgotten somebody, particularly in the outfield. Um, but I'm pretty, I think I think that's uh, that's all pretty much there and done. So as I said, let me know what you think. If you have enjoyed this series, guys, do make sure you hit thumbs up. It's been an absolute blast bringing it to you. Uh, it's been a real disappointment we only got the one World Series in the end. But I think we only ever missed the playoffs once. So it's been... We've hit highs without really hitting the highest of highs as often as I would have liked. So, as I said, let me know what you think you'd like to do next uh, with baseball. But as far as the New York Mets go, I've enjoyed it, guys. I hope you have too. See you later.